Bert's got uh, safety he'd like to show us, and I'm always good with that. So, Bert, over to you. I'm going to put the spotlight on you. Okay. So, um, everybody can see this. This is an urn that I made. It's a it's a, st a staved urn. I put a, a removable plug in the bottom. Holds about 230 cubic inches, and it was made uh, on a special request. And well, I'm actually made two of them, and you should be able to see me on the shop. You got us. Okay, just uh, wait for it. Whoa! Oh, oh whoa! Yeah. <laughs> I doubled up. It'll show it again here in just a second. So uh, the, I know the first time around, everybody gets their attention. The second time, they look a little closer. So I run it twice. Holy okay, shit. so... <laughs> yeah. Okay. I um, noticed you checked uh, your te teeth, Bert. <laughs> <laughs> well, I got hit in the face uh, hard enough that it uh, it popped the uh, the face shield compressed against my face. It popped this lens out of my glasses. I had no blood or no 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 uh, things. My phone was in my pocket. When I took my phone out, it was no. This is a brand new phone. It's nice and level. The phone that I took out of my pocket was like a banana. Wow. I had no bruise, no bruises on my body. So I say, well, my phone had a cracked screen anyhow. It was, it was time to be replaced. That just brought it a little bit uh, quicker. But uh, the main point was is uh, uh, wearing a face shield saved the day. So, uh, you know, that's uh, I'm going to show this at our uh, club meeting next uh, next Thursday, too, just as a safety moment. And that this all those pieces you've seen flying. This is all those pieces. So what know. happened, Bert? Was it bad glue or cold glue or too soon to go after gluing? What happened? Uh, it was um, uh, mental uh, stupidity on my part. If you'll notice, uh, this is a staved, staved construction. And, uh, of course, when you're doing staved construction, you've got uh, end grain and side grain or, or uh, uh, grain. spindle turning and cross grain turning. And when you use the wrong tool on cross grain, bad things happen. What was the wrong tool? So I, I, I shaped everything with a bowl gouge on these ends. And then this part was, uh, I used a spindle gouge on. And if you'll notice, I was coming across to the end of here. And as soon as the spindle gouge touched the cross grain, that's when it exploded. So, so it's that's uh, a, a spindle roughing gouge, uh, Bert? That's correct. That's, uh, you know, I could say the, the brain cells. Bird, is that a doing... butt joint? Are the cap uh, actually, are the they're... put on with the simple butt joint? No, this is actually, uh, there's a, a tenon inside of here. I, I put a tenon in the uh, uh, bottom side of this piece that fits down into the, the bore of the barrel. So it's actually a spigot, like a, a mortise and tenon joint, about all better, a little better than an eighth of an inch. How thick are the tenons? I mean, the, the uh, you know, the, the staves. The staves are uh, five-eighths to a little over five-eighths of an inch thick. Okay. How long ago before, uh, how long had the glue set and what was the temperature in the shop when you glued it up? Uh, it was about uh, probably 20 degrees uh, Celsius and it had been glued up for uh, three days. I, I re went back and tried to watch this thing in slow motion. Uh, this was just a little wise cam security camera uh, I captured the footage on. And so I tried to go through frame by frame to see exactly what happened. And that's when I found out that, uh, yeah, brain fart. I had the wrong damn tool in my hand. And as soon as the spindle rubbing gouge touched the cross grain, it caught. And this is oak. So oak's an open grain wood. Uh, you've got to be careful with oak. You've got to use sharp bowl gouges because it's open grain. And I think that's uh, it's just a, it, everything broke on the wood. All of the joints, glue joints, were in perfect shape. Every bit of the piece that broke was broke along the grain line. And that's why I was able to find all the pieces. And I just put them all back together. And I would challenge anybody to find all of the uh, splits in here because uh, I couldn't find them after I'd uh, uh, turned and sanded it. The, From uh, what the happened to your phone, you're kind of lucky you didn't wind up in that jar. Tell you the truth. Oh yeah, that. absolutely. That's uh, like I say, without a face shield, I wouldn't be. Uh, I, I, without a face shield, I probably wouldn't be here this morning. So, 
I think without a phone in your pocket is more is as much to the point. You know, yeah. That was a blow yeah. to the chest. How, yeah. how fast was it going, Bert? Uh, it was only going about 600 RPM. Oh. Uh, specifically, with something like that, I generally don't go very fast. Uh, I was because I was concerned with centrifugal force and all of the rest of the things. So probably between six and eight hundred RPM. You should have had an overhead camera, and then you could have even seen it more dramatically. <laughs> uh, yeah. Well, I didn't expect it to fly apart. I've got uh, three little wise cams stuck around at three different angles in the shop, and uh, this one here just happened. To, I was just really happy that it actually captured the event because. It's a great training moment that's, uh, you know, people talk about face shields all the time. And this is just another one of those ones where it's reinforcement for uh, damn sure wear a face shield, regardless what you're turning, wear a face shield. Now, I'm more concerned about what type of face shield. Was that one of those bionic ones or whatever you call That's it? a bionic, uh, I think it's an I-87, uh, whatever rating it is on it. I'm, um, it's a UVEX. Bulletproof. Yeah, UVEX, that's right. It was a UVEX. <laughs> I see a lot of people wearing just this face shield that just comes down and has no bottom piece, just a piece of plastic in front of your face. And that's a splash yeah. guard. That's, that's not a face yeah. shield. That's, that's, that's right. That's a splash guard. Yeah. Splashing on you. That isn't any use at all at the lathe. But an awful lot of people wear them and they think they're being safe. So that's, well, that's light and cheap. That sort of, yeah. 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 That's well, a good point. I'll make, sure I've, I've, uh, I'll make sure I've mentioned that it is a bionic, uh, a UVEX bionic face shield in it. It did deflect and it did push up against my face because I said it popped my glasses and uh, flexed yeah. them enough that one lens popped out and uh, and the other piece that hit my phone. Well, but the, bit, the most important part was the face shield because there, there would have been blood on the wood if I didn't have it. Anyway, that's my oh. story for today. Good. Bert, you can, you can flatten your phone out with a, uh, a few taps of a hammer. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 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 okay. Wood shop. Thank God for wood.